about two or three months after I started corresponding when he wrote me back, he had life without parole. And he told me in two weeks he'll be going home. I said, what? He said, and he was thanking me. So somebody said, well, what did you do? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know specifically. I, I guess maybe it was a lawyer I sent him or whatever. And somebody grabbed his case and uh, caught some flaws and he, he caught a break. The incarcerated community that's all over the country write and ask for different services and information that would help them in terms of their release or during their incarceration, what they expect when they come out. Jobs, housing, clothing, stuff like that. And I provide that information for them through the Fortune Society. The impact of being confined on a, an individual, right, it, it's, it's sort of hard to explain, but I, I, can, I can relate to a lot of the stuff that they write for and a lot of the things that, they, that they're going through. A group of us went into a, a grocery store up in Harlem that we knew they had, uh, you know, money was there for transfer and stuff like that, so we went in to get it. While in there, a customer was killed. I didn't shoot the customer. However, it was just like I shot the customer because the law says uh, any, you were in there together, so it, it, everybody gets it. Do you find it's uh, difficult at all to disconnect yourself from the stories that you're I'm sure these people pour out a lot of information about why they're there, what they're going through. I think about it, but I don't think, it, I, I don't become, I, I don't get overwhelmed by it, you know. I don't get overwhelmed by it, but I periodically, uh, maybe uh, I'll think about one or two of them if they made that kind of impression, you know. <laughs>